All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I am thrilled to be here on this uh, webinar, the first one of 2024, uh, for five ways to use flat for education in your music program. I am delighted to be joined this evening by Mason Hillegas. Uh, Mason is the head of global sales and account management um, for flat for education. Mason, thank you much, uh, very much for being with us here uh, this evening. Thanks for having me, uh, Jim. It's a pleasure, and uh, I'm excited to show everybody kind of what together we can do for the for the music space. Terrific. Um, so, just so everyone knows, there is on Streamyard a way for you to ask questions, and we encourage the questions. We we will try to condense all the answers to the end of the webinar, uh, but if there are ones that are timely and you really need to know, you can ask them at any point, and we might choose uh, to answer them in the middle of the webinar. But uh, let me dive right in and tell you what to expect uh, for this evening. Um, again, joined by Flat for Education. These are the points that we'll be uh, covering and hopefully um, it will cover all aspects of K-12 music programs. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is why do you even need notation software in a music program? For many music teachers, it's the first thing they think about when they think about, hey, what, what type of software would I need as, as a music teacher? Many people think uh, that notation software is one of them, but we'll also talk about why your students uh, might need them and, and what it can do and, and how flat specifically um, is different than all the other programs that are out there and some of the features that make it so exciting. Um, then we'll talk about uh, three very specific integration points. The first, you know, the, the vast majority of music programs in the United States, at least, focus on performance ensembles and what you can do with flat um, with your ensembles, whether you're teaching choir, band, orchestra, modern band, mariachi, steel pan, uh, piano, whatever you do with your kids, there is stuff within flat uh, that, that I think um, is really wonderful um, to uh, afford your students the opportunity to use uh, to, to make their performance ensemble experience even richer. After that, we'll go into composition. You know, when we talk about general music and when general music, we're talking all the way down to elementary school uh, to the youngest ages up to, you know, even into the college world, uh, composing with notation software is, is something that is very natural. Um, it is the way that a lot of composers do their craft. Uh, and so we'll look at some composition activities and strategies uh, that you can do with flat. Next, we'll look at music theory. Uh, music theory is greatly enhanced. I can't imagine teaching music theory, to be honest, uh, in this world that we live in without uh, some type of notation software uh, at your uh, students' fingertips. So we'll look at some of the, the various things um, that you can do with between worksheets, uh, voice leading, all those types of activities that, that are, are kind of common with music theory. Um, before we get into the practice first and soundtrack integrations, um, we're also going to talk about a really cool tool, uh, the music snippet uh, that you can use with Google Docs and Google Slides. Um, and then, uh, you know, after the two integrations, which I think are really, really cool and are very specific uh, to Music First and Music First Classroom, we'll uh, open it up for questions and, and try to get all of uh, them answered. We're about 45 minutes in total, just to give you an idea. And if you're watching this um, remotely, you can always get in touch with us uh, through our various emails. So I'm gonna dive right into the main question to get, to get us all started. And again, if you have comments that you'd like to share, please feel free within the StreamYard interface. So why? Why notation software in a music program? Well, let me give you my little quick history of the way I used it and um, maybe this will strike a chord with some of you. Um, when I started teaching back in 1992, um, really music notation software was the only software that there was around. There were programs, uh, oh, I used a program called Personal Composer. There was a composer, uh, a program you might've heard of called Finale. Um, back in the early 90s, music notation software was really uh, the main way uh, for students and teachers to interact musically with their computers. And with that were, you know, so many different uh, things for teacher use, teacher use specifically. I can't imagine being a teacher without some type of notation software program. Um, 
first and foremost for creating materials for your students. It's just very simple. If you want to, um, you know, whether it's creating uh, materials uh, to show up on a screen to explain a musical concept, whether it's to create your own arrangements, to create a musical, you know, melody for your students to sing along to. When I first began, I taught in a very poor school and I had no budget for music. And so I custom wrote arrangements for my ensembles. And having, you know, think of music notation software really as like a word processor. It's kind of if you were going to write a story, if you were going to write something for other kids to read, you know, would you really write it on paper and let them see your chicken scratch handwriting? Or would you put it in a word processor uh, and, and print it out uh, for the students to be able to read a whole lot easier? For those of you uh, who have ever played in a pit, for a musical, if you remember the Tams Whitmark scores where they were all handwritten, I would always be asking the conductor of whatever pit I was playing and what note is this because it was really kind of chicken scratch handwriting. So obviously that's a very uh, you know easy thing to wrap your head around you know so that you can actually read the music. But when you think about what notation software can do and specifically flat, um, today it's incredible. Um, all of the features that are available. Google Docs is something that kids know about when they're writing, uh, you know, a Word document, you know, something that they uh, need to do for homework. Well, think of Flat and the collaboration feature that Flat has, which is really extraordinary and unique to Flat. Think of Flat as the Google Docs of music software, of music notation software, so that students can actually live collaborate on a same score um, and write music together um, at the same time, which is extraordinary and unique to FLAT. And it's something I think is, is pretty magical to see. It freaks me out, to be honest, uh, that, that we're able to do that. Um, the sound set, um, one thing I will say, and I think it's clear head and shoulders, is when a student can write something and instantly hear it back and have them hear what they've written, it is a magical experience for kids. Uh, it also tells them, was it good? <laughs> was it something that you enjoyed listening to? Um, and if you're writing music for a trumpet or a bassoon or a piano, isn't it really nice when you hear that played by an instrument that sounds like a bassoon or a trumpet or a piano rather than kind of what I would call the cheesy MIDI sounds that you'll typically hear with notation software? That kind of experience is really wonderful for kids and really can open up a whole sonic palette for them and say, wow, this is really neat. And it, and it doesn't just need to be for traditional instruments that you'd find in a band or an orchestra or a choir. Um, Flat has all kinds of instruments, including the instruments that you might hear in a rock band, that you might hear uh, in a country band, in a, in a bluegrass ensemble, you name it, uh, or mariachi, um, they have it. So. Um, you know, notation software for music teachers is something that's very understandable, very accessible. Uh, and for students, it's like teaching kids English without teaching them how to use a word processor so they can actually create. Think of it that way. If you're teaching music, it's good for kids to be able to go in and write it. And I really, uh, I'm a huge advocate for notation software in, in aspects of a music program. There are places where it doesn't belong. I'm very well aware of that, but for the vast majority of things that are in a music curriculum today, it is really essential to have a notation program. I hope that all makes sense, and I'm going to dive into now to the um, uh, specific parts of the music program uh, that you might use it in. But if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comments section. Right, so we're going to go into flat with your ensembles. For many ensemble teachers, and I'm talking about any type of ensemble in a school where kids perform, it doesn't matter the instrumentation, the, vo the voice mix, I'm talking any opportunity for kids to perform, there is a great way to integrate flat into those ensembles. So let me uh, dive in and show you some specific things, and then I'll actually show you a couple things on the software itself. So as I mentioned earlier, as a teacher, creating your own arrangements and your own original works for ensembles is something I know a lot of music teachers do. Um, 
copyright notwithstanding. Um, it is, I've seen many, many music teachers, if a kid says, hey, I heard this song on the Super Bowl last night and I really would love to play it. Um, is there any way that you can figure this out? I know most music teachers uh, have the wherewithal to be able to go on, open up a, a, you know, a, a, a score, a single staff even, and write down a melody for their kids. I've done that. I once had the kids ask me, uh, the, in, a, in a joking way, they wanted to play the theme song to the Teletubbies. This was back in the late 90s, uh, and there was no Teletubbies sheet music available. I looked on J.W. Pepper. I looked everywhere. couldn't find it, and so I actually went in and made my own arrangement, and the kids absolutely loved playing it. So for a te from a teacher's perspective, it's great to be able to do that. Um, this next bullet point is something that I've seen at conferences many, many times. And you might say to yourself, really? The answer is really. Uh, have students compose warm-up exercises for the ensembles. Um, it's something that you do every day. It's like calisthenics, whether it's for your choir and you're warming up your vocal cords, whether it's for your orchestra, you're tuning up, getting the instruments warm, or your, or your uh, wind orchestra, a band, or a wind ensemble. Having students write simple warm-up exercises, even if it's only scale patterns. If you're doing your B-flat concert scales and you're you know, playing whole notes and then you go into different rhythmic patterns, have the kids just do the scale with different rhythmic patterns. Um, or have your kids, uh, you maybe more your advanced kids in your, in your high school, write chorales for your, for your ensemble. Or have them go in to a website like the Choral Public Domain, find a chorale that they really like, and then have them adapt it for the ensemble. Um, giving kids that sense of agency, that sense of purpose, where they're having a piece of music that they've written, performed by the ensemble they play with, is a very cool and special experience for them. Next thing is that FLAT has already a great resource library. And after I get through these bullets, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Mason to share some of those. But there is a great resource library already uh, available um, with some, you know, kind of example files for students. In a second, I'm going to show you a kind of a, a very quick ensemble uh, assignment that I would show, that I would do if I were still teaching band. Um, you can sync your pieces, your scores with actual audio or video files. So if you have a piece of music that you're performing and you find it on YouTube, you can easily sync that YouTube video to the score if you have it available to you in flat. Really, really cool. And uh, towards the end of the presentation this evening, I'm going to show you the coolest feature in flat, at least for ensembles, in my opinion, is that any score that you have in flat, you can export directly to practice first so that your students can be assessed. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to the uh, Music First classroom, and I'm just going to go over there and show you. Uh, I made a class called Flat Examples, and in the Flat Examples, I'm going to go to my class overview, and I'm going to show you record yourself performing this piece. So I created this for my students. When I open it in Flat for Education, um, I can show a student preview of what this looks like. So the students log in, uh, they open up their assignment, and it says record yourself performing this piece. They can go in and see what that looks like, uh, and then they can record it. So there's an audio recording uh, that they can do. So it's pretty cool. They go in here, there's a record button. I'm hoping you can see this. They click record. They pick the uh, part that they want to play. They record it, and when they're finished recording it, this little button right here that FLAT helped us uh, uh, build so the integration between the classroom and FLAT works out beautifully is a little turn it in. So you can, after a student is completely done recording their part, they can turn it in for the teacher to hear it. Building a portfolio for your students, uh, a, a portfolio of their work, is extremely cool. Does it do auto assessment within FLAT? No. It does, however, take that recording, attach it to that student's account, and uh, lets the student turn it in so that you as the teacher can hear it um, and, and compile a portfolio of those student recordings. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my slide deck now um, and uh, hopefully, let's see, yep, there we are in our slide deck. Mason, if, if it's okay, I'd like to turn it over to you to show us some of the really cool resources that you have in some of the classes 
uh, in flat. Absolutely. Um, thanks for that intro on, on the ensemble work. Uh, what I think is amazing is, uh, as you said, digitizing everything and bringing it into this space uh, gives a lot more opportunities uh, and I think is a faster way to proficiency. Uh, we have loaded, as you mentioned, a lot of resources into the platform itself. Those are all here under sample assignments. Um, I've broken these down into classes for simplicity. Um, there's a lot of things you can do, whether it's performance, whether it's composition. I think, uh, as you mentioned, kind of when you're working in an ensemble, one of the key things is getting the students to work together, practice together. Um, so, for example, this is a very basic thing. It's a blank score. Separate your students into group of uh, six. Uh, and they can essentially compose together. Um, so I'll show you here what it looks like in the app. Um, you can preload it with different templates, different instruments, things like that. You can have your students leave comments for each other uh, live while they're working. Um, and that's just, let's say, one quick attribute. Uh, on top of that, as you mentioned, for performance, we don't have the auto grading, uh, but I think it's a great starting point working towards practice first because it doesn't auto grade. It gives the students, let's say, some more time to become confident before they start to get feedback. Um, so let's say here's a recorder practice. This is, let's say, on, on what is this from about first, second, third grade, um, where your students will get a fingering chart and they'll be able to record themselves, as you mentioned previously. And uh, this is a great way to scale proficiency by giving them two different visual, uh, let's say, uh, outputs that they can use, um, record themselves here and send it to you. And then obviously you can listen to those files, write in Music First Classroom, give the grades. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very quick. Yeah, and I think Mason, that that, that little uh, recorder fingerings under the notes, I don't think a lot of people know that you could do that. That's pretty darn cool that uh, there are fingerings available. So, you know, we've got a quick uh, webinar this evening. We could probably spend the rest of the time going through all these activities. Um, but, you know, at the end, we're, you know, we're going to encourage you to get flat and try it out for yourself if you don't already have it and, and go and explore these resources yourself. We're going to go back into the slide deck now and move on to the next um, aspect, which is, uh, you know, composing with flat. Um, to me, one of the most powerful activities you can do with your students is to let them compose. And there are a wide variety of tools out there where students can compose, um, but being able to compose in um, notation software is something that's really, really special. Let's go back to the slide deck, there we go. I'm gonna move uh, forward to here's some ideas. I'll show you an example or two, and then we'll go back uh, to Mason to pick up anything I missed. So the first thing is that that flat, as, as Mason just showed you, there are assignments that are already pre-made in the resource library to serve as an example, as a sample, if you will, um, for you uh, to do. What I would typically do with kids is give them a, a baseline and have them write a melody over it. Give them a melody, write, have them write a baseline underneath. Give them a, a measure with a melody and then a blank measure for them to complete. Those types of activities, especially when you're starting out, really give uh, kids a uh, kind of, think of it as bumper bowling, right? If you give students a, a blank score with all of the you know features and say, go ahead, compose, they're not gonna be able uh, to do that r really easily. You know, they're almost killed by, uh, or their creativity might be hurt by all the choice. So what I like to do with kids and uh, students specifically in the K-12 arena is when they, when they first get started, giving them um, kind of uh, guidelines or very strict rules when they get started and then slowly taking away those rules uh, as they get a little more comfortable. And one of the most amazing features of Flat that I don't see in any other product is what they call tool sets. And I cannot overstate how important these are. You can create as the teacher uh, unlimited amounts of tool sets. And what those tool sets do is let you say, you know what, in this tool set, the students can only use the quarter note and the quarter rest. That's it. All the other features then become grayed out. And they may, that may sound draconian, but when you're doing this with third graders, eight-year-olds, and saying, I'd like you to compose a four-measure melody using only quarter notes, 
having the ability to block off all the other wrong notes and just say, no, it's just a quarter note and a quarter rest is incredible. Very, very powerful tool. When Flat first launched this, I went nuts because I thought, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I've been uh, asking and advocating for, the ability to, to kind of give those students those rules. Um, music first library, the, our own content library has pre-made resources as well. Um, really, really cool. I can't uh, recommend that strongly enough. We have a brand new set of composition um, lesson plans that are in the music first content library under the general music section, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, you can create template files for your students. You can, any score that you have in your own library can be shared with students for them to work with. And the collaboration feature, which Mason just mentioned, uh, extremely cool. Give out group work, um, have them uh, compose, uh, you know, one person compose a melody, one person compose a harmony, one person compose a uh, a, a percussion part, one person uh, composed the bass line. Very, very cool. I'm going to switch now over to um, the Music First Classroom, uh, and I'm going to go in here and show you uh, one of these examples, uh, if you will. I'm going to go to um, compose a melody over the bass line. So this is what it looks like in the Music First Classroom. I came up with an assignment. I gave a bass line and said compose over it. When you click on open in flat for education, it launches that assignment as I just showed you. By the way, this assignment I created myself in about three minutes. So it's not hard to do. When I click on edit, just to show you what this looks like, every time you log in as a student- Sorry to interrupt, you just need to reshare the tab um, so that we can see the flat. How's that? There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel, appreciate that. Um, yeah, so whenever it launches a new tab, thank you, StreamYard, appreciate that. So whenever a student launches it and, and, and completes it, I can go in now and start composing. And right now, I am just typing the letter names because I do not have a um, uh, USB keyboard hooked up, um, but I'm just typing letter names in. Right? Now I am going to move on and compose. I'm just a beautiful little composition. I hope you like my, my, my gorgeous master. And then I'll put a half note here. It is going to be good. All right, uh, get rid of that. When I'm done with this and my I have my beautiful little composition, which I'll play for you now. We'll start it from the beginning. done. I feel like, yeah, this is beautiful. I really like this. All I have to do is click turn it in. Uh, and I'm going to say, yes, I do want to turn this in. And now it is given back to my teacher for an assignment. The teacher can then comment, they can hear it, they can listen, they can give suggestions. It's really pretty cool. I'm going to switch uh, tabs and go and open up the Music First content library just to show you in the general music section, just to show you the second thing, first compositions with flat. If I click on this, there are 17, uh, there are four lesson plans, 17 tasks pre-made. So if I wanna do a question and answer lesson plan, I open it up and in there, there are all these uh, pre-made assignments ready for you to use with your students. So again, with composition, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mason in a second, with composition, um, you know, there are tons of pre-made activities that I strongly suggest you use with students first before giving them a blank score and saying, do whatever you want. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, go back into the stream yard and uh, Mason, uh, maybe you can show some of the composition activities that are already included with Flats Resource Library. Yeah, absolutely. Um one thing I do want to show just before I show some of those resources is one of our goals at FLAT um, is to make sure that regardless of how you learned music and where you start, you have multiple ways to get it from your head, um, from a digital keyboard, uh, or if you're a guitarist like me who started out with just reading tabs, uh, regardless of where you started, the composition assignments allow you to give your students multiple ways to compose. Um, for guitars, it's just the tablature. 
in there. For recorders, you have the fingerings. For drums, you have different pads. Um, so we've done our best to make sure that when you're in a composing space, you have, let's say, multiple avenues you can pursue. Um, in terms of, let's say, the assignments that are on there, you did show one similar to this. This is composing a counter melody. Uh, this allows you to have your kids write the right hand um, as you were doing. My skills are not as, uh, as good as yours, so I won't try to create something beautiful here uh, on the fly. Um, but uh, we, we've preloaded this. Again, same space, resource library, whether it's flute, um, if you're training them to use voices, that's another option. So, for example, if I open this one up for you here, because voices are something a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're starting out. So here it's working with writing in different voices. Um, and again, all of this is preloaded, so it's just plug and play. It goes along with those music first uh, classroom examples that you have. Um, you did hit pretty well on the nose with everything. Uh, keep in mind with the tool sets, that's the bread and butter of composition because most students K through, let's say eight, you're gonna be struggling with them being overwhelmed in an airplane cockpit of things. Um, but when you throw, let's say boom whackers on there and you limit the tool set down, you can make things, let's say as simple as possible to get started. Um, and I know it may sound silly, but we do have a lot of sounds. We have things like cat meows, Jim, you're going to laugh at this, but it's proven that if you give young kids uh, an assignment that says compose using cat meows, they get hyper engaged and they start to compose on their own. And in the end of the day, them having access to a notation tool for compo uh, composition um, means we get a lot of original stuff flowing all the time, not just driven by the teacher. So that's wonderful to see. Uh, that's great. And what I'd love to do before we move on to music theory is just address the concerns that some music educators might have about, well, isn't notation software a barrier for entry into creativity when it comes to composition? And here's what I would argue. First of all, um, what a great activity. And I, I see this in, in the office that I work in in New York City. Um, oftentimes, the ability, like if you create your own piece of music, if you create a song, and you want somebody else to be able to perform that. How are you going to transmit that information to them, right? As a, a hugely important part of the songwriting process. So if you're using a program like Soundtrap, for example, and I, I saw your songwriting uh, less, you know, the, the resource for songwriting there, how to write a song. What happens when you're done writing the song in Soundtrap? It's all finished and you want another musician to be able to play it. Um, the... That is when, uh, you know, for those people who say, I don't want notation software anywhere near the creative process. That is an absolutely real world example of when the, it does enter the process. And to be able to transmit that your musical ideas to another human being so that they can play it and not just by rote, um, but, you know, so that anyone can play it is, is something that is part of the music industry. Just ask the sheet music folks out there that produce piano, vocal, guitar and what a great lesson, what a great real world activity for, let's say you're teaching modern band and these kids write a song for guitar, bass, drums, keys, and vocals. And you say to them at the end, now you have to be able to notate that in the notation program. Vocalist, you write your vocal part. Guitar, you write the tab out. Bass, you write out the bass part. And then have them as the culminating activity of their songwriting uh, you know, experience, be able to do what happens in the real world, which is to write it down. So uh, that that's what I would say. And, and for teachers that skip over that step, it's not the end of the world, but it is a, you're missing a wonderful opportunity for kids to do something that they would probably have to do in the real world. So let's switch back now to the slide deck if we can, Rachel. And we'll move on uh, to music theory. For me, music theory and notation software go hand in hand. They're almost like, how do you do music theory without it? And yes, I have a lot of gray hair on my head. I, you know, I'm in my 50s. So when I went to music theory class when I was eight years old, I had a uh, a little tiny, uh, you know, music. Um, staff paper pad and the teacher would go up and play and I'd have to try to it, write it down with my giant note heads and, and I was struggling with with uh, my manuscript and I didn't really enjoy music theory uh, I'll be honest I didn't enjoy it because the the transfer of all right I'm hearing this note and then having to write it down and, and make it look 
you know, legible so that my teacher could tell whether it was an E or an F or a G. Uh, it made it like really nerve wracking. Um, I, I don't I don't look back at my music theory class with any type of um, fondness. Let's put it that way. I think if I had had notation software, I would have felt a whole lot differently about it. So here are some quick ideas. I'll show you an example or two of the worksheets and the quizzes that are in flat are phenomenal. Um, but having your students complete theory assignments using the pre-made worksheets is excellent because what you're really trying to do here is save time, right? And there are a lot of worksheets that are already there. There are, uh, and, and I can't recommend strongly enough using the ones that are in the library to start with. And as you get more and more comfortable with the software, as you learn how to create your own worksheets, then you can do that. But they give you a lot of, of pre-made resources. Strongly recommend checking them out. Making your own theory assignments so that you can customize, you know, the, the assessment that you're giving your students. Let's say you're teaching appoggiaturas um, and you want the students to use appoggiaturas in the context of a melody. Having them go in and write it in a melody or, or you know, in creating an eight or four measure blank template for the students to be able to go in and fill where you have written instructions ready to go. Let's say that the flat resource library doesn't have that. It's really, really simple and quick to make those assignments. Um, you can go on right now to a multitude of websites. Um, let's take CPDL again and go to the Bach Corrals. Um, you can download a lot of those corrals as music XML files. And one of the things I love about Flat is when you click on import score, it basically, it's like instant. If you take an XML file and say import this score, it is instantly in your library. I was taking it through its paces today. Because it, like, could it do a full score? How long does it take? It's pretty darn quick. And the reason is that music XML is really just zeros and ones. Um, when, it, when you boil it all down and flat, does a great job of translating that. Thank you for putting that link up there. Um, so having students, giving them a corral that you didn't have to do any work other than downloading it and uploading it to flat and then having the students write in the Roman numerals is really, really cool. Um, if you want to get into the heaviness of all the different like 643, 642, you know, type of figured base things, you might you might have to teach the kids how to do that. It is possible. It's a little clunkier than, you know, writing tiny little numbers, but it is it is possible. But, the you know, the main Roman numerals like a one minor two minor three major four major five. That's very, very simple to do. You could just use the lyric tool underneath the chords. Very, very easy and, and super cool. The embedding, oh my God, when I found out that you can embed notation examples into your, if anything that you have online, whether it's Google Classroom, Canvas, uh, you know, um, Schoology, all the things, wherever you can embed code online, you can embed the music uh, from flat, which I think is extremely, extremely cool. Um, and extracting portions of a score, and I'm going to let Mason show this uh, right after I'm done with my bit, is, is the musical snippet. Uh, tool, which awesome. I can't tell you, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago when I was, uh, you know, getting before I, I got to music first, the most common question I would get from teachers is how do I make a music theory quiz in Microsoft Word? Um, well, now we don't talk about that anymore. We talk about Google Docs. How do I make, a, you know, a theory quiz in Google Docs? And when we get to the snippet tool, which I'm going to have Mason show you in a few, I think you'll, you'll really find that exciting. Um, what I'm going to do now is share my screen. Let's see. I think I took mine off. So I'm going to go to uh, sharing my screen. I'm going to share my, uh, let's go here and click share, Rachel. That should be able. Can you let me know, Rachel, if, if you can see my screen now? Sorry, I did that. Yep. Somebody let me know whether you can see it. I, there we go. Okay. So you can see my screen uh, in the, I'm going to go back into my class, uh, which is, I made it one called flat examples. And in the flat examples, if I go to the class overview, there's this complete this note naming worksheet. What I'm going to do now is switch over to what it looks like as a student. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make sure I share this tab instead. Uh, let's actually go to demo user task. I'm going to log in as Mason. Uh, I'm going to give add my password. This is what it looks like as a student. And all I did for this, by the way, 
is go to the resource library and attach it. So complete this note naming worksheet. I click open in flat for education. It says complete this, start assignment, click, and here we go. What note is this? Well, I know that that's a 16. Can you see hey, Sorry, no, you just need to share the tab again. There, there we go. go, we can see sorry it. About that. Um, so it gives me this rest and says, what kind of rest is this? I know it's a 16th rest. I click next. What is this? I know it's a quarter rest. By the way, this is so much stress being able to do this in front of you, knowing that there's a lot of music teachers looking at me and hoping that I don't get any of these wrong. In fact, what I'm going to do is purposely get this one wrong. I know it's an eighth note and I call it a quarter note. It didn't tell me, which is what I set it to. This is an eighth rest. All right, let's see how I got four more to go. This is a 64th rest. This is a quarter note. Next. Uh, this is a whole rest. Where are you? There we go. And I'm going to get this last one wrong. I'm going to call it a whole rest again and click turn it in. All right. So I got seven out of 10. It gives me my score. Um, that's pretty cool. And as a teacher, it took me almost no time uh, at all to create this. So I'm going to share my tab here. When I go into the flat examples, I don't have to grade anything because that flat uh, uh worksheet was auto graded and immediately added to my um, uh, grade book, which is amazing. So just real quick, I'm going to open up flat and before I turn it over to Mason, I'm going to share this tab. Um, really, really simple uh, to do. You can go in. There are lots of I've already logged out, which is great. Um, uh, there are pre-made activities in the resource library. Let me do this, uh, Rachel. Let's go back to the um, uh, slide deck, if you will, and I'll turn things over to Mason to show the snippet tool. Um, all right. Thanks, Jim, for that. Uh, before I touch on snippet, just because uh, I really want to drive home how simple the music theory stuff can be, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I, I kind of wanted just to show the process of, let's say, the worksheet that you created with those, those 10 questions, because... Um, I know a big thing is, okay, how hard is it to make? Because everybody wants to save time. Um, so what we've done is we've curated, let's say a lot of topics. Uh, you can do pretty much everything, but let's, let's do some scales. You come in, you can really mess with people here, pick some, uh, some hard modes and you just essentially say how many questions you want and you hit go. It's going to auto populate those for you. And this is the stuff that you saw Jim put into the Music First Classroom activity. Just like that, you've got your questions. You can add different topics. Um, we see a lot of great usage for this uh, as beginning, mid, and end of term uh, because it allows you to, let's say, gauge where they are uh, in the process because we all know in music theory you have a lot of different levels going in. Um, and lastly, those do give you analytics. So when someone turns in an assignment, you get the analytics on which topics they got right, what they got wrong. So it allows you to, let's say, adjust moving forward what you teach. Um, now that's all online and we know kids find ways to cheat online. That's no, that's no, <laughs> that's no question. They're sneaky. They, they figure things out pretty quick. Um, so we got a lot of requests for, okay, how can I create offline music theory resources? Uh, so what we did is we created this extension, Music Snippet. Some of you may know it from before as Flat for Docs. Um, and what it does is it pulls from the power of that editor. Um, and it allows you to create, let's say, any type of snippet. Uh, you can also pull from your library on Flat for Education in your snippet library. Um, but I'll show you, let's say, the creation process here just so. Here. Um, so whatever you want to do. Uh, I saw a question pop up for Boomwhacker, so let me activate those real quick so you can see the process under layouts. Let's turn those Boomwhackers on. Perfect. And we just hit add to document. You can adjust things if you want to hide time signatures uh, and whatnot, and you export that into your document. That comes in as an image. You can adjust those, move them around. You can edit them so you don't have to go back and redo things. I know a lot of teachers are at the moment are taking screenshots from a score, pasting them in here. And if you want to go back and adjust your work, you go find the score, you adjust the score, take a new screenshot. Um, this really streamlines that process. And when you're inside of the snippet, you have your library here, which stores everything you've created. 
Those are also stored in your Flat for Education account. So in your score library, you'll see a music snippet folder where those are all stored and it allows you to move things back and forth. So if you're creating stuff uh, in either place, you can use it for assignments and or for music theory worksheets. Um, that is an extension. So uh, under the uh, integrations tab in Flat for Education, for those of you looking for it, you've got here Google Docs uh, add-on that works in docs and slides for now. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great tool on the fly to give physical resources. You can put no notes and do manual tests. I know the whole purpose of the notation software is to get away from that, but sometimes it is good to take it offline and make sure that it's uh, sticking with your students. Uh, that is awesome. awesome. Um, thank you very much for showing that. And let me just say that, you know, during during the pandemic, a lot of music teachers, when they couldn't be with their students in person, specifically performance ensembles, they relied heavily on these types of tools from FLAT, um, you know, in terms of working on individual musicianship skills, working on ear training, working on music theory. The thing that I'd like to hammer home before we go to the, the, the uh, integrations with uh, Practice First and Soundtrap is that you don't have to take up the valuable class time, the valuable rehearsal time to continue that. You can easily do this type of thing that uh, Mason has shown you, theory worksheets that outside of the class time so that students are engaged with your performance ensembles even when they're not in the rehearsal room. And I think that's super important to keep kids engaged. And, and don't forget what worked during the pandemic. Uh, I think it's super important uh, to keep continuing to build uh, student uh, individual musicianship skills and specifically with music theory. All right, we'll go back to the slide deck now, if you will, Rachel. And I just wanna show um, some really cool things uh, with flat integrations that are specific to music first classroom. Although you can do this in the standalone version of flat as well. Um, and that number one, is that flat? Um, the you know the amazing developers uh, behind uh, the screen, if you will, uh, made an um, uh, you know two really cool integrations. The first one is that flat can go from uh, any notation file directly into Practice First. What does that mean? You open up a notation file, you're working with something, and then you want your students to be assessed on it. You can just quickly do that. Let me show you. I'm going to switch to uh, my screen. Um, let's go here and I'm going to, uh, let's, let's look at this. I'm going to actually, uh, switch over to this tab. Um, hold on one second. I have to share a news boy. That's always fun when you do that. I'm going to share my screen again, switch to my new tab, click share, and I'm going to open up flat right here. And of course I'm always doing that. It's great when I, uh, let's go here and click score library. It's always fun. Let, let's just pick something, uh, anything. You know what I'll do is I'll import a score. I'll show you live. Uh, here's the sonata from the Bankel Gesanger leader, right? Uh, Jim, sorry for, for cutting hey. you off. You're going to have to reshore that. Yeah. So I'm opening so, up. Yeah, and just make sure you share the practice first tab as well. Okay. Great, thanks. Appreciate that. So I'm opening up uh, this, uh, um, you know, very, very famous um, uh, brass quintet, uh, the Bankel Gesanger leader. If any of you play brass instruments, you've probably played this at a wedding or two uh, in your life. Now, what you can do here, there's this little button that you'll see in a lot of cloud-based tools with a cloud with an arrow pointing down. If you click on that, um, you can, uh, of course, I have to open up practice first, I'm guessing. You, uh, um, Sorry, Jim, you're in a student preview, so you're in as a student, so the teachers can go into practice first. So if you, at the bottom there, if you hit leave student preview, you'll go back to your teacher base. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's why. That I uh, Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Um, thank you. And go into my demo class and go into, um, let's go, my score library. There we go. There's the Bengal Sanga leader. I'm hoping you can still see that. And there's that little cloud with the arrow pointing down. And then it says export to practice first. I click on that. And then what it's doing is taking that entire score and converting it into a practice first file. One button, right? I just did that. As soon as that practice first file opens, um, I'm going to uh, switch. So you get, I'm getting my percentage. It takes about anywhere between a, about a minute um, to do that, what it's doing is incredible. It's converting notation files to a practice first file that can then be 
assessed, which is super cool. While that's doing that, I'm also going to do this. I'm going to click the export and click export to Soundtrap. So, um, by the way, super important. Um, it you know it's not going to um, when you can go the reverse way from Soundtrap to Flat. As long as it's notation, it will make that into a track within Soundtrap. So I'm going to do that at the same time too. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm waiting for this uh, 50%, 54. Um, it's always fun to wait while everybody's watching you. Uh, no, anyway. I mean, it's, it's a brilliant integration. And the way I like to look at it, Jim, uh, we spoke about this before, is that it really takes your, your students from, let's say, level one to composing, learning notes, then they're working um, to practice it, let's say, without auto grading, just recording themselves, gaining confidence. And then practice first is like, let's say in my eyes, that next level where you're ready, you want to get some grades, you want to judge yourself uh, on the fly, see how you're performing. So, I mean, this integration is is really uh, key, I think, to progression. Yeah, and 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 to be clear, no other program does this. Not Note Flight, not MuseScore, nothing. Uh, this is uh, this is unique to Flat, and it's one of the main reasons we love working with Flat so much, and we recommend it to every one of our Practice First customers because of this integration, which is really really neat. Um, anyway, it's still doing it. I probably should have picked a a, a one line piece, but you get the idea. Um, I will uh, while we're still waiting for that. Uh, I will do something. Let's go. Just, I get impatient. I'm sure you do too. Um, come on, you can do it. I actually have one that's already complete. If you'd like me to show. That'd be great. Thank, Thank you. Okay, cool. I'll come back to this by the end to show everybody. We'll go back. Uh, so this is a two-part partner song. Um, I have it exported to practice first. And there it is. It's super easy. Once it's been exported once, it takes less than a second to do it a second time. Um, yeah, it's uh, and then you can assign this to any of your students. You can have your students create exercises for each other, which is very cool. Uh, but yeah, this is something that I absolutely love about Flat. Yeah, and you know, for those of you, you know, wait, I'm waiting on the Debankle Gesanger leader. Uh, it's a long piece, and so the longer the piece, the longer the export takes. Um, and it is, it is, uh, it is amazing that you can do that because there's nothing else that does it. You can't do this with Make Music Cloud. You can't just open up a, a score that you have uh, and and make it suddenly show up in um, in in a, in a music assessment program. And you could do the same exact thing with Soundtrap. So if you wanted to take this uh, and let's see, is it still going? Of course, it's still going. Uh, I, I, I did it earlier, but uh, let's see. And um, what I'll do, what I'll do now. Yeah. I'm assuming if it's stuck at 90, there's there's some some glitch in there. It's usually uh, quite a bit faster than this. Um, yeah. There it goes. So what I'm going to do now, you can see it there. Uh, let me let me you can all see my screen. Yep. So I'm going to click uh, save. Right. And there we go. There's the piece in uh, practice first. And I can then have my students look at this. It already put the parts in a drop down menu so the kids can choose the part that they want to assess. Um, they can hear it played. And uh, let's go here. Now, I'm not about to go sing that for you, but you get the idea. That is extraordinarily cool if you're an ensemble director. Anything that you can find in a music XML format, which you can then bring into flat, or anything that you compose within flat, um, you can bring over to practice first. Uh, and there's another way, which we'll talk about probably on another webinar, you could do it with music. You take it from a PDF, you convert it to music XML, you bring it into flat, you send it to practice first. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't reiterate enough how, how much of a huge time saver that is. What I'm going to do now is, is show you one more thing. I'm going to click on flat again, um, and I'll pick a, a much smaller piece. I'm going to pick, uh, let's do um, baseline example. You'll probably have to share that again, Jim. There you go. So I now have my baseline example where I just have a base part. I click on the export to Soundtrap. It then will um, immediately bring that bass line into Soundtrap, which is super cool. 
Now, what I like to do with this, and you might think I'm crazy, is there are so many um, MIDI files that live online of pop songs, folk songs, you name it. Um, you can bring those MIDI files, open them up directly into flat, let the kids play around, let them change it, let them adapt it, let them arrange it, and then have them bring it into Soundtrap to um, add a beat to it, add some loops to it. Really, really cool uh, activity for kids. The ability for flat to speak with Soundtrap is, is mind-blowingly cool to me. Um, Rachel, let's switch back to the uh, slide deck, if you wouldn't mind, and we'll go here. Um, so those are the two integrations that I wanted to highlight tonight uh, between Flat and Practice First and Flat and Soundtrap. And I think having those uh, integrations is something extremely unique and time-saving for music teachers. Thank you, Peggy. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, you can. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I thought you had to do it within the, um, within the Compose tool that was in it. I know you can open up Finale files directly. That's really neat. All right, so we're going to open it up for questions. I went a little bit over time, but uh, are there any questions um, from the group? Um, just know, uh, let's see, for audio recording, could a student record? Hold on, I can't see all that. Um, uh, sorry, my little things in, in the way. For example, could a student explore the room of speech, recording themselves to playback as they notate? Um, I think so. I'm, I'm trying to... I think if I understand the question correctly, uh, yes, a student could record themselves, upload an audio file to a score as like a backing track um, and then notate. So you can add any audio file to the editor itself. Um, so in terms of like an assignment, uh, I don't think there's like a really smooth way to have a student record themselves, send it to you, then you'd have to create an assignment. But if it's just for students practicing on themselves, they could upload the audio file to a blank score and uh, transcribe that. Um, and that also leads into, let's say, dictation, where you could upload something for, for some ear training and put the audio file um, and then do the, the composition after that. Yeah, it, I mean, it's not the best way to do it, is what I would say. There, there, are, other, there are other ways, uh, uh, Jillian, um, to kind of get the same idea. Um, there was another question about students and teachers having to pay for subscriptions. Um, the answer is yes, you do have to pay, but what typically the way it works is a school will send in a purchase order for all of their, you know, teachers and students. We call them users, uh, for lack of a better term. A user is a user, so you don't pay extra for a teacher or a student. There, it's just, it's a flat rate, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, so you're looking at $2 per, you know, per user per year. Um, and we typically start off with 50 users as a minimum number to get started, which so you're not talking about a whole lot of money for an extremely powerful tool. And there is no other uh, online uh, notation platform that's that inexpensive because there are in, in the other product, for example, no flight, they have a teacher charge and then all the other uh, accounts are, are two dollars. So uh, it's, it's a really amazing value. Any other questions before we wrap up? And, and for those of you that may have joined late or, or missed this webinar, um, we uh, we will be streaming this. Uh, I'll be putting a blog post. Uh, we'll put this up on, on all of our socials for you. Um, and if you do have any questions, you can uh, get back at least to us at info at musicfirst.com. Uh, uh, Mason, what would be the best email for uh, questions for you guys? Yeah, that would just be uh, edu at flat.io. Uh, maybe, Rachel, if you can throw that up on the on the screen for us. Edu at flat.io. Um, so what we'd love to do is if you are not a flat user currently, you can go to musicfirst.com slash free dash trial. You can go to musicfirst.com and click in the top right button. Um, if you're ex an existing Music First classroom user, we put out a a, a call for you to have flat added to your music first classroom. If you missed that, just again, info at musicfirst.com um, and we'll get that sorted out for you uh, if, if you can. Um, yeah, so edu at flat.io if you have questions. Thanks so much, Rachel, for putting that up. If you have questions for Mason directly and info at musicfirst.com uh, uh, if, you, if you have questions for us. That does it uh, for us. Uh, I wanted to say thank you first to Mason Hillegas for joining us. Uh, and thank you, Flat, for your ongoing partnership with us. I think um, uh, you'll agree that it's an amazing tool. It does way more than just print out music. Um, so please uh, feel free to dig in 
um, and, and get your hands dirty with your students, uh, uh, creating music, collaborating, uh, and using all the different features. You know, if, if, if not for anything else, the snippet tool is worth the price of admission uh, in terms of you getting a flat account and, and being able to do, uh, you know, notation directly in your Google Docs and Google Slides. It's mind blowing. Mason, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I thoroughly appreciate it. Rachel Castro for all the behind the scenes switching. I'm sorry for my fumbling around. The older I get, the more interesting these uh, platforms uh, become. And thank you all for joining us. I appreciate you taking time out of your day, especially if you taught today. Hope for those of you in the Northeast, you have a nice snow day tomorrow. But wear your pajamas inside out and have a day off and maybe uh, go and play around with flat while you're uh, having your coffee uh, tomorrow while you're at home. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Really take care. Uh, and we uh, hope you'll use uh, flat uh, with your students. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it.